Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer Online with Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida on this Friday, July 26th, 2024. I'm Kate Guerry and I'll be praying with you today. So good morning, Ian and Julie and Pete. Good morning, Wendy and Pam. Good morning, Joan. And good morning to all of you who join us today or later online uh, by Facebook or um, YouTube. I'll take a deep breath and then we'll get started. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. From Isaiah 57, 15. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of almighty God, our heavenly father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And now we take just a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts for confession. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we can say the Venite in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. 
Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our psalms today are Psalms 40 and 54, and we can say those together. Psalm 41st. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. And so I said, behold, I come. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will. O oh my God, your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O oh Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say, aha, and gloat over me be confounded because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry, O oh my God. And Psalm 54, save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. 
You have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson today is from Joshua 9.22 through 10.15. Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said to them, Why did you deceive us, saying, We are very far from you, while in fact you are living among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you shall always be slaves, hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, <clears throat> because it was told to your servants for a certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. So we were in great fear for our lives because of you and did this thing. And now we are in your hand. Do as it seems good and right in your sight to do to us. This is what he did for them. He saved them from the Israelites, and they did not kill them. But on that day, Joshua made them hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to continue to this day in the place that he should choose. When King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem heard how Joshua had taken I, and had utterly destroyed it, doing to I and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, he became greatly frightened because Gibeon was a large city, like one of the royal cities, and was larger than I and all its men were warriors. So King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent a message to King Hoam of Hebron, to King Piram of Jarmuth, to King Jephai of Lashish, and to King Debir of Eglon, saying, Come up and help me, and let us attack Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lashish, and the king of Eglon, gathered their forces and went up with all their armies and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. And the Gibeonites sent to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal saying, do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who live in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the fighting force with him, all the mighty warriors. The Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly having marched up all night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who inflicted a great slaughter on them at Gibeon, chasing them by the way of the ascent of Beth Horon, and struck them down as far as Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel, while they were going down the slope of Beth Horon, the Lord threw down huge stones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. There were more who died because of the hailstones than the Israelites killed with the sword. On the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to the Lord. 
And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Deshar? The sun stopped in mid-heaven and did not hurry to set for a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since when the Lord heeded a human voice, for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And will you say a song of praise with me now? Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The second lesson today is Matthew 27, 1 through 10. <clears throat> when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests taking the pieces of silver said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we say um, a song to the Lamb, and we can say that in unison. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord, our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will <clears throat> they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, for every family language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, 
be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and evermore. And now we'll say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, suffrages A, and if you have the script in front of you, I'll read V, and you can respond with R, which is in bold. But I'll say both for those who don't have a script. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now we pray some collects. Um, the first collect is the collect of the day. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. That's a good prayer. That's neat. Now a collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And now a prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Highveld, Southern Africa, the Right Reverend Charles and Thethalele May, Bishop, and the Diocese of Eastern Himalayas, North India, the Right Reverend Roshan Thapa, Bishop. We pray also for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, presiding bishop and primate. And a prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Meredith, Howard, Rick, Carolyn, Mariella, Bob and Beth, Don, Peter and Mirabel, and Bobby. We pray also today for ministries of current activity, remembering especially back to school supply drive, that the children of the Warfield School may begin the school year with the school supplies necessary for them to learn and thrive and for the food pantry, that through nourishing the bodies and spirits of our neighbors in need, we may be a beacon of faith, hope, and love in this community. And now our Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. And if you're joining us from another congregation or another practice, um, you're welcome to say this over your church or um, congregation. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all in the chat box, and I'll pray over it, or held in the silence of your hearts, which we will also hold those up in prayer. Ian asks to pray for harmony among nations in the spirit of the Olympic event as we witness the opening ceremonies of the Paris Olympics today. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see. Almighty and everlasting God whose will it is to restore all things in thy well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers over uh, France, Paris, all the athletes in the Olympics and all those involved, all those present and spectating. Um, assist us in these our applications and prayers and dispose the way of thy servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by thy gracious and ready help. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do one more because I did see this one about angels protecting us. Let's see, protection. O everlasting God who has ordained, and constituted the ministries of angels and men in a wonderful order, mercifully grant that as thy holy angels always serve and worship thee in heaven, so by thy appointment they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I found this on from page 199 through... 202 of the Book of Common Prayer, there are some prayers that um, are labeled of the Holy Spirit, of the Eucharist, of the Incarnation. But if you read them, they um, uh, I've relabeled them in pencil to um, explain to myself so I can um, be ready with these prayers. Because when you read them, um, they're really prayers for faith, service, protection, self-awareness, courage, renewal, and one world. All right. Wendy um, says, please pray for Olivia, daughter of my friend. Olivia was just married and is very sick now with an illness she has called POTS. She is 35. Let's see. O oh, Father of mercies and God of comfort, our only help in time of need, we humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve Olivia, for whom our prayers are desired. Look upon her with the eyes of your mercy, comfort her with a sense of your goodness, Preserve her from the temptations of the enemy. Give her patience under her affliction. In your good time, restore her to health and enable her to lead the residue of her life in thy fear and to thy glory. And grant that finally she may dwell with thee in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. See. I'm looking for the prayers of thanks. Oops, I have them labeled somewhere. This is for my friend. You're welcome, Wendy. This is for my friend Ashley, who is still sick, but is also recovering at the same time. Um, Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we give you humble thanks because you have been graciously pleased to deliver from Ash uh, from Ashley's sickness. Your, oh, sorry, from her sickness, 
your servant Ashley, in whose behalf we bless and praise your name. Grant, O gracious Father, that she, through your help, may live in this world according to thy will, and also be partaker of everlasting glory in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> And Ian asks for prayer for the South Florida Haiti Projects programs, projects and initiatives to have a significant and positive impact in the lives of the people of Bondo. I don't know if you all saw it, but I saw that Teresa posted on Saturday, she was able to deliver, I think, um, excuse me, deliver a, um, I think a 1600 pound pallet of rice and something else. Um, and that will help start off the school year for Bondo, but they are certainly looking for more um, support because that I think will only last um, uh, a, a bit of time. Let's see. Gosh. O God, who created all people in your image, we thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. And in this vein, Lord, we ask a blessing over Bondo. Um, and that uh, they would be supported in the ways that they need by you, Lord, and by uh, your hands and feet here on earth, that we would um, be guided um, and know um, how to effectively serve them. Amen. Pray for Father Groff during this time when he serves as the lone member, lone member of clergy serving Good Shepherd. Give him strength and perseverance while we await the calling of an assistant rector. It is a big job for one person, and we really appreciate Father Groff. Let's see. Hmm. Almighty and most merciful God, grant we beseech thee that by the indwelling of thy Holy Spirit, uh, Father Groff and his congregation may be enlightened and strengthened for thy service, especially in this time where he is our only clergy at the church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the same spirit ever, <clears throat> one God, world without end. Amen. And um, I just, I keep hearing about the hunger in Gaza. And um, so I just want to pray over that as well in the same uh, vein as praying over Bondo that that um, the people of Gaza and the people of anywhere that are hungry in this world who are in conflict uh, in, in areas of conflict um, and stress and strife um, that uh, they would be served by the hands and feet of Jesus and that we would um, understand how to serve them and uh, yeah, let's see. Oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness. 
and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And for all of you who have prayers in your uh, heart and prayers or thoughts in your head that haven't, um, as Father Derek said, folded their wings yet and come down into your heart. Um, we, uh, we lift you and your thoughts and your prayers up to the Lord. Who knows just what we need. In that first collect that we read, the collect of the day, revisit that. Um, Lord, you know just what we need. And we ask you for an awareness to lean on you, to trust you, and to believe in the best. Amen. And now a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Um, it's Friday, so I wish you a lovely weekend. And remember to be kind because the ripple can be so magical, so blessed. Bye, everyone.